Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and come you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Let us now hear the first reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was formless, void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Here is this reading. Let us also hear from the psalm, Psalm 29. Ascribe the Lord, you gods, ascribe the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar, cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees lie and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned upon the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Let us now hear from Mark's Gospel, the Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the pond of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in Jordan. 
And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, the Lord Christ. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. On some days when I arise and make plans for the day, I assume I will be going this way, but circumstances sometimes dictate and rather than going that way, life calls me to go that way. Such is the case this morning. I had a wonderful, magnificent sermon prepared for today, but due to the circumstances that have transpired this last week, I decided that I need to go in a slightly different direction. Just when we think things might be settling down in our lives, and we might be getting a little control of things, for example, when the vaccine is now being rolled out, we are, of course, hopeful that that will have an important and dramatic effect on the conditions of the health of our society and we're hopeful about that things happen and things get worse rather than better something happens and we now have found ourselves not coming out but maybe going deeper into some hole if you will and not quite knowing where it might end up It is clearly at times like these we would like to hear a voice, a reassuring voice that things will be well, things will be okay, we will get through. Certainly that is the message I think we hear from our scripture readings today. There is a voice to be heard. The question is, can we hear it? Now, I hate to admit this, but I have become more cynical of late to the point that I'm not sure I believe or trust many of any of the voices that I hear. Even when I know that people are well intended, what I know to be true is that what I'm actually hearing is not the complete truth about something, but at the best, a partial truth. And what deeply concerns me about the world in which we live in, even though we live in this magnificent age of information, that the information that we receive is not really trustworthy. Where do we turn? Where do we turn? Where do we go to find some sense of confidence in life itself. Well, there is a place that I go that I do find some solace and comfort and confidence, and that's my experience of life. And as I was thinking about the events that have been transpiring this past week, I am reminded of a few events that have happened in my life that I would like to share with you that I go to in times like these where I look and listen for a voice. I don't know whether you've known me long enough to hear to know that you've heard this story about, but I'm going to share with you anyhow. Okay, it came to mind this past week, and that is Something that happened with me as a young boy on the farm where I grew up. In the 10 acres around the house, we grew up, I grew up on like 200 acres of property, and the, but the 10 acres that were surrounding the house and barn, it was placed in, the, in this grove primarily of oak trees. And when I read the psalm 
for today. It reminded me of this a little bit. There was one particular oak tree that was a magnificent oak tree that stood right in the midst of this 10 acres. It was so immense that at least three people with outstretched arms could not reach around the trunk of this tree. It was a magnificent tree. I remember one day, I came out the back door of my house, and as I stood there and looked into the grove and looked at this tree, I was startled by a large crack sound. And right there before my very eyes, I watched this tree completely fall apart. One thing that was unique about this tree, there was one limb that came out perpendicular from the trunk, and that limb was at least 16 to 18 inches in diameter. As I stood there and watched this tree, the weight of that limb was such that it simply broke off from the tree and crashed to the ground. And when that happened, it set something in motion such that the rest of the entire tree simply fell apart there and crashed to the ground right before my eyes. It was, to say the least, a startling event. And I, of course, asked the question, why? Why? Well, upon closer inspection, it did not Well, the answer to that question did not elude me because when I went up to the base of the tree, what I had not seen or could not see was the entire core of that tree was rotten. So consequently, what happened was the weight of the very limbs of the tree was such that it actually collapsed under its own weight and simply destroyed itself in a matter of seconds. Things like that happen. There are destructive forces in the world such that things actually disintegrate and collapse. They fall apart. Like the rise. The other story I'd like to share with you is something that's actually ongoing right now. I may have told you that um, my wife and I and my son bought a house in Chattanooga. And it was a simple house built back in 1960. Um, and it was, of course, in need of a lot of repairs. And we bought the house knowing that it needed a lot of repairs because we were going to fix it up and my son is going to live in it for a while and maybe at one point he will sell that and move on to another place. And we actually knew when we purchased the house that there were some parts of the house that needed some major repair, in particular one area that we knew that had been leaked on the outside and it had come down and it rotten the floor out of me. So I suspected that when I pulled back the flooring, I would discover more rotten wood. And indeed, that's what happened. What was a little unnerving about it was it not that I can't fix things like that, is that when my son and I began to pull away the facade of the wall and such, that what we discovered was there were certain support beams in there that were totally and completely rotten such that I could take my hand and simply break down and all of the entire support post simply disintegrated on the ground. What was holding up that particular portion of the house was not the support beam, but the facade. And of course, in time, the facade will not be able to stand as well. What was a little unnerving as well was that as he and I began to peel back the floor, the rotten beams that were supporting the post were also rotten. And of course, we did not know how far this rot extended until we continued to pull back and pull back and pull back. 
At least about 10 feet into the room that we found good wood. And it was back at that point that we had to begin to reconstruct the foundation of this particular part of the house in order to reconstruct the room. If Kenny could zoom in on me, real zoom in, no, no, don't do it. You don't want to do it. <laughs> if you looked at my fingernails, you would see some blue stuff all on my fingernails. And I worked real hard this morning trying to get my hands clean. What I have been doing this past week with my son is I have been in the crawl space underneath that very room in which we reconstructed and we are putting in new plumbing in order to take this space that at one point was totally rotten and totally useless to us and we're going to rehab it, if you will, and, and plumb it out for an entirely new bathroom. I actually love doing this kind of work. But I do not love the working condition in which I do them. He and I, for the last several days, have been crawling around on the crawl space that's hardly enough for us to, to, to wiggle under cobwebs and spiders and bugs. It's just nasty. But after three days of hard work, of putting in sewer lines and putting up with all the stuff that goes with that, we actually turned the water on, and guess what? It worked. He's got water. He's got water. You see, I believe that life, if you read my sermon from, I guess it was last week, that there is a spirit that governs the world in which we live in. Just like we heard in our lesson from Genesis. That creates life. And my message last week was, and no matter how bad things get, the darkness will not overcome the light. However, Things do destroy themselves, just like that oak tree did. There are forces that will act in such a way that it will destroy itself under its own weight. And this, I don't think it's being pessimistic, I think it's being realistic for me to say that that we may have not reached the bottom yet. From all of my studies and readings, I have come to believe that fundamental to life is we live in a world of polarities. We have light and we have dark. We have good and we have bad. And one fundamentally cannot exist without the other. They are inextricably tied to one another. But there are times in life when when that space between them gets so stretched Things get so polarized, things do disintegrate to the point that it may break. And that's the nature of a growth. That's the nature and what's fundamental to rebirth. For societies like ours to undergo significant social and political changes, we may have to get to the point where these polarities are so stretched that they get to a breaking point 
And it's then and only then can we reorganize, if you will, reintegrate, if you will, reconcile, if you will, to create something new. We desperately need to hear a new voice. A new voice that we can believe in, trust in, hope in, rely on. That's the message of today's story from Scripture. There is such a voice. There is such a voice. Now, I debated whether to say this, but I'm going to even say it because this is, I believe, another truth that has to be considered for us to get to a point where we can actually hear a new voice. And that is, Even the church needs to be reorganized, if you will. The, the political system that we live in from all sides has tried to co-opt the gospel as if we're the true Christians and you're not. Or we're the true Christians and you're not. Maybe the truth is that we need to let go of that as well. To let go of that assumption that I even know the truth. Where do we go? Where, where, where do we go? So we can hear this new voice. I certainly do not get it from social media. I don't get it from TV, radio. I don't necessarily get it from other religious leaders. So where do I go? One is, one place I go is my experience. One place you can go is your experience. You know what's true for you. The other place I think we can go is deeply in prayer. Maybe more specifically, I think the place that we can go is deeply into silence. To be still. long enough so we can hear. I think that one of the greatest challenges we face in today's world 
is for us to get to the place where we can actually trust in God enough for us to be still and to listen. There's one big lesson that's coming through to me from this pandemic that we're all living through is the realization that that there are clearly things that are active in our world that are pushing us to a place where we cannot rely on the normal, if you will, institutional structures to provide us safety and security. And I know that that leaves us in a quandary. That leaves us, again, asking the question, well, where do we turn? What do we rely on? Who do we listen to? And I think the circumstances of this world are pushing us to realize that we must trust in God in a way that maybe we've never trusted before. We must find a way to be still. To listen. To that voice or for that voice. See, I'm actually with how the world's down. You see, when you get to this point, you're almost left with the question. What else is there to do? And maybe, maybe that's the point in which we need to get. Maybe that's the point in which we need to reach. the point in which we've arrived where we are no longer getting out rotten wood and we're getting down to some fun, fundamental solid structure from which we can rebuild. In my experience, that when life gets like this, what I'm called to do is to be still. Not scramble around looking for another voice to rely on. Not scurry around and try to find some answer to some question I may have. Maybe I'm at this point called to actually let go of the question altogether. 
Let it go. There's an old Buddhist saying that says, maybe the point is not to seek answers, rather is to forget the questions. Maybe to that point. Will we begin to realize what real faith in God is like? The process of reorganization, reintegration, is actually not something that we do. It is something that God does. Maybe our call is to be still and listen. Listen for the voice that will guide us to this new place. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, but the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He had spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray for the church and the whole world. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth. Live together in your love and Reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, the people of this land and all the nations and the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all who are alive and closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ and now we love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your 
every saint to endure the eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to the apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins for the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heaven city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Let us now confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and thought word of thee. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you and forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen all of us and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now may the peace of the Lord be always with you and go through with you.
And I pray God for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. And whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, and we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you your creation this bread and this cup. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, for all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to the heavenly country, where with Joseph and all your saints, so we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him. And the unity of the Holy Spirit, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now we're going to say to Christ that told us we were born to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep in peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness. 
ashes sing us apart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the world. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.